multiple small vegetations along the line of closure of the valve and they consist of fibrin and the platelets and these vegetations are held there very tightly they don't embolize these vegetations rheumatic vegetations don't break away remember other vegetations like infective endocarditis vegetations break away but rheumatic vegetations don't break away so multiple rheumatic vegetations are formed during the acute rheumatic endocarditis when fever is over when fever is over these vegetations heal but you know they are having a lot of platelets and platelets produce platelets from these vegetations they release platelet derived growth factor what they release platelet derived growth factor so when they are healing lot of fibroblasts are activated there and those fibroblasts lay down the collagen so due to this collagenization these vegetations become sticky with each other and leaflets start these leaflets start fusing with each other so what really happens that at the edges of the leaflets at the margin of the end of the leaflet edges may fuse with each other and so the cusps of the valvular leaflets may develop rather they do develop some adhesions they develop some adhesions now when fever is over vegetations heal by adhesions vegetations heal by fibrosis and this valve become fibrotic and distorted so this was a long term complication what was this long term damage we have seen when there was acute pericarditis when it was patient came out of the fever right rheumatic fever was over acute pericarditis healed completely acute myocarditis either kill the person or acute myocard rheumatic myocarditis when when it is subsides does not lead to any long term complication so pericarditis and myocarditis does not lead to any long term complication the long term case complication develop uh, due to acute endocarditis and during the acute endocarditis the lesions are rheumatic vegetations and these vegetations which are formed on the surface of the valves right and these vegetations they heal by fibrotic process and adhesion of the leaflets occur and due to that reason a valve become distorted is that clear now let's develop another concept this is the timeline this is streptococcal infection again there is streptococcal infection again there is streptococcal infection if this is the person uh, which is belonging to those 2 to 3% of the population who are vulnerable for rheumatic fever so after streptococcal pharyngitis they are developing this is what is this rheumatic fever right they are developing rheumatic fever now the thing which you have to understand is during the rheumatic fever look the skin lesions skin lesions form and totally disappear skin lesions form and totally disappear the polyarthritis develop and totally disappear is it right after the fever this is rheumatic fever polyarthritis form and completely disappear chorea develop and completely disappear but remember chorea sometimes appear in a delayed way out of the feverish situation but whenever chorea is there eventually it completely disappears so skin lesions completely disappear without any long term complications subcutaneous nodules do not produce any long term complications acute rheumatic arthritis polyarthritis produces severe pain during the fever but it heals completely no long term complication right then acute rheumatic pericarditis completely heals acute rheumatic myocarditis either kill or completely heal the real problem is with acute rheumatic endocarditis that acute rheumatic endocarditis endocardial inflammation it comes down but it does not heal completely it will heal with fibrosis and distortions and adhesions so there will be some residual damage when next time when second time when next time rheumatic fever uh, next time again when uh, streptococcal infection occur again rheumatic fever occur now further damage to the valve will occur and this time valves are more distorted and after the next valve will become more distorted so you can see that th during every rheumatic fever attack this person is developing endocardial lesions and valvular lesions and uh, these lesions are getting cumulative they are getting cumulative uh, pathological distortions of the valve 
right? So we can say that during the attention place, during the fever, all the problems which are present in the heart, they are called acute rheumatic heart disease. Acute rheumatic heart disease. What is acute rheumatic heart disease? Acute rheumatic heart disease may be peri rheumatic pericarditis. Acute rheumatic heart disease may be rheumatic myocarditis. Acute rheumatic heart disease may be rheumatic endocarditis. But when repeated attacks come and endocardium and valvular lesions start forming, so this problem, which is in between the attacks, which never heal completely, this is called chronic rheumatic heart disease. So what is chronic rheumatic heart disease? Chronic rheumatic heart disease can never be rheumatic pericarditis because it heals completely. Chronic rheumatic heart disease cannot be rheumatic myocarditis because it heals completely. Chronic rheumatic heart disease is due to repeated attacks of acute endocarditis, acute valvular lesions, which every time during the rheumatic fever, they heal with fibrosis, heal with distortions and adhesions and calcifications in the valve. So, when patient develop repeatedly uh, streptococcal sore throat, this patient develop repeatedly rheumatic fever. So, every time patient damages its valve and these valvular lesions become more and more progressive. Number one, due to repeated rheumatic fever, for example, there is a child uh, who developed the first attack of rheumatic fever in the age of six year. And if you did not give preventive prophylactic antibiotic, maybe in the age of eight year, then nine year, then 12 year, so child develop repeatedly rheumatic fever, which is followed by every type, uh, every time uh, streptococcal sore throat by the special strain. Now, due to repeated attacks of rheumatic fever, valvular lesions have cumulative damage. And eventually, by the age of maybe 17 or 18 or 20, a child will develop severe valvular lesions like mitral valve stenosis or mitral valve regurgitation or aortic valve lesions also. So, in the long run, these, this problem when patient develop valvular rheumatic lesions leading to valvular deformities, this is called chronic rheumatic heart disease. Let me sum up. During the acute fever, patient develop problems in the heart. These problems are called acute rheumatic heart disease. But with repeated attacks of fever, multiple attacks of the fever, valves become distorted and we call it chronic rheumatic heart disease. Is it clear? Now,